Computerized Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon. And by your tips and memberships on Coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just $1. And as always, thank you for all your support, including sharing, chatting, liking, and subscribing. Now roll that famous logo animation! Good evening and welcome back to Computerized Start Live. I am your just-in-time host, Justin D. Morgan, and I even remembered to, un to unmute. Yes, I actually managed to start the live stream a few seconds before 9 p.m. And then we get the countdown because of YouTube reasons. Fun fact! YouTubers put countdowns at the beginning of their live stream because YouTube shows ads when you start the live stream. Also, fun fact, here's who we have in the chat. We have Thomas Armstrong. Hi, Thomas. We have Frank S. Hi, Frank. We have SadMac356. Hi, SadMac. We have KMac Vintage. Hi, Will. We have I8086SX. Hi, Jesse. We have Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shack remarking that I was on time tonight. Yes. We have me remarking, don't make me turn this stream right around. I was half tempted to restart the video animation, but I realized jokes like that aren't very funny when it comes to channel engagement. We have Retro Tech Chris. Hi, Chris. We have the chat that just jumped. All right, let's see. I think. Oh, we have Kibbs with Retro. Hi, Kibbs. We have... Yes, I think I've said hi to everyone that I see in the chat. All right. It is... Actually, I'm going to dare to go to live chat mode. I do that when I remember at the moment that doesn't really show me much more than top chat. Anyways, don't forget it is April Apples. So, yes, the month where we get to celebrate all those fun 8-bit Apple computers plus the Apple II GS. It has an 8-bit mode because those are the computers that my generation grew up on. So keep an eye out for that hashtag April Apples. You can get more info at aprilapples.net and you can go follow April Apples on X at It's April Apples. And I think Let's see here. And I have a coffee goal, but it's uh it's inaccurate. So that's why I'm not showing the bar. I, I gotta figure out how to fix it because I've had a because I put a goal for an Apple II Plus, but then I had a offer for some parts to build one, so I don't need the full amount. So Anyways, that's why I'm not showing the bar, the mount's wrong, but I do have a coffee, I have a goal. The goal probably will be now to get parts to finish said Apple II+, Plus, plus maybe some parts to fix computer. But anyways, yeah, I know. Um, but let's see if we can't get to work on some other 8-bit Apple-related stuff. I know this is not... The computer I have on the workbench, but it does go with the computer. And oh, I think I have some finally set something in front of it. Anyways, for the past year, I've had this like beige thing sitting right here. I have a box sitting in front of it now. Oh, yes, that was the box the keyboard was in. Oh, it's actually the box that, if I remember, I keep taking upstairs. And... Oh, I just made a huge mess. I forgot there was newsprint in it. Anyways, uh, yeah, you can see the uh, Apple IIe composite monitor here. It's been sitting here for at least a year. You can see I've got a, a beige case now in front of it. It's got some other company, some other beige goodies back here that you can't see. And there's a Yamaha CX-5 MPB company. Anyways, yeah, it's been there for at least a year. Uh, computer's upstairs. 
Um, computer needs parts. So computer's upstairs because I just haven't bothered to bring it downstairs. Because I don't have the parts to fix it yet. I'll, I'll bring it down at some point. Oh, wait, we had a couple people join the stream. Probably not used to my... Sometimes I can start on time. We have Gut Bomb. Hi, Gut Bomb. Yes. Anyways, let's see here. What do we have on the bench? We have, and I think this is the analog board is what they call this. Anyways, so I have my Apple composite monitor that I got with my Apple IIe. But the monitor worked once, and then the second time I tried to use it, the image was all screwy, and I tried recapping it, thinking that maybe that would fix it, because while I was in recapping it, I reflowed solder joints, because there are a few heavy components on the analog board, including the flyback transformer. Anyways, that didn't fix the problem. So Adam McGee offered to send me another board from another monitor because I got the distinct impression that the fault was actually with one of the ICs on the board. There are three ICs that do various video-y things. There's one right here, one right here, and there's one right here. They are not standard 74 series logic chips. They're actually like monitor control chips. Huh, funny that there'd be monitor control chips in a monitor right anyways so adam mcg had um an apple 2e composite monitor that was in pretty poor shape if it says anything about how poor of a shape it was in e-waste cut the cord off of it so we'll have to transplant the cord from the other board but before i even bothered to do that i am going to recap this board because I'm also going to reflow the large solder joints. Now, why am I going to recap this board before testing it? First of all, these are quite fiddly to put back in the monitor. And second of all, I'm pretty sure some of these caps have started to leak. So I'm going to recap it first. I know it's taking a risk, but it's a calculated risk. But I'm going to first recap it, and then we'll deal with the clipping, because it'll take a while to recap this. There's a number of capacitors, because I could probably zoom in just a little more. Yeah, other, other way, there are a number of capacitors, especially if I can get this board out of the way. There are just a number of capacitors. They are all those cheap looking capacitors and they probably need recap. So I was going to recap it first and then we'll then we'll swap it in because I'll have to replace the power cord. The other thing is the way these work, I pretty much have to put it I, I pretty much have to reassemble the monitor. So if I'm going to go through that trouble, I'm going to recap it first. Hey. Uh, let's see. We have a... KMAX says, need a basement cleanup stream. I... I... I just need to clean... Do a little basement cleanup. I don't necessarily need to stream it. Yeah, Jesse says, cleaning's overrated. Hib says, pile of high voltage. Yes, this would be a pile of high voltage if plugged in. Jack says, that remi oh, hi, Jack. Reminds me, I've been meaning to recap my 2GS monitor. Jeremy says, that reminds me, I need to get potentiometers for my great aunt's former composite Magnavox monitor. Hib says, cap goes boom. J Jack says, if it goes boom, I want to see. Well, uh, I'm hoping it doesn't go boom. But I believe that this monitor is... Well, it's kind of hard to test it without reassembling it because it is... 
No. Just the way the monitor goes back together. All right, let's see if I can get this board off. So what I will probably do is I'm going to, I will try swapping just this board along with the associated neck board because it seems as if all the wires for it are soldered in and not plugged in. There is a good chance I will have to, or at least for testing it. Um, Jeremy's asking, is it him or is the camera focusing on the neck board? Well, it very well could be focusing on the neck board. And there's not really much I can do about it because the wires are not long enough to set it all the way out of the way. So. I mean, honestly, in an ideal world, if the neck board was like plugged in, I would unplug it because actually I'd probably rather use the neck board from the current monitor, all things considered, because these drive potentiometers are going to be set for that tube. So I may have some adjustments to make, but anyways, I, I cannot focus this camcorder manually. You all, um, that I don't know how you focus it manually. Unfortunately, the more things get automated, the harder it is to do manual things with some things. Maybe if I could get this far enough apart so I can actually Yeah, the, the one I have recapping it didn't and reflowing the large joints did not fix it. All right, I'm going to. All right, so there are some solder wires that I will have to. deal with. So I think the board should be free. Hey Garth, welcome. Just got to the slightly more exciting part. I get to warm up a soldering iron. Jeremy says, I suggest leaving the neck board until you get both neck boards together for transfer. Actually, I may not swap neck boards. I may just adjust this one to match the other one because there are 27 bazillion wires that go to the neck board. Well, not quite that many, but it's more than it's more than a small reasonable number. So I may just adjust the potentiometers to match the other tubes properties. Oh, it probably also should go without saying that this is 
I'm not intending this stream to be a monitor repair how-to stream. It is for entertainment purposes only. Monitors contain high voltages, which can hurt you. So don't don't undertake monitor repair unless you know what you're doing. And if you want to undertake monitor repair, take actual training somewhere. This is not intended to be said training. There, I think I said the uh, important disclaimer. Also, that made more of a mess. Yes, as Garth says, these CRTs can have mini zappy zappies in them. This analog board has been unplugged for at least a year, probably more. So none of the capacitors will have any charges in them. Capacitors, as a general rule, don't stay charged that long. Now, the CRT the tube itself. Given the nature of it, I will discharge the tube itself because there is a chance that, given the way that a CRT tube works, that it might have collected a small charge on it from sitting. That is possible. I don't know what voltage level that could be. Probably, I am. Presuming probably not a significant one, but I don't know. And I'm, uh, and I am melting wires that I did not intend to remove. So it looks like I will probably have to replace the power switch. Which, given the fact that it looks like they're, yeah. All right, so I'll probably have to swap the power switch over because I have boogered up the wire. Looks like I found some heat sink to fix it. Uh, yeah, Jesse, as Jesse says, all advice is provided as is, no warranty, yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Garth says, I got a... Uh, this, mic uh, this monitor only contains micro voltages. Well, at the moment, yeah, I'd be, I mean, it's possible capacitors can collect the charge from the ambient background, but it's going to be a very small amount. It just so happens that the CRT tubes are, oh, maybe I didn't get that wire too bad, so maybe I can desolder this wire that I sort of melted. I'll put some heat shrink over it and then resolder that wire. Yeah, I believe all, I, I've recapped one of these boards before. I kind of found it annoying because, yes, I believe you are correct, Will. The wires are, the wire numbers are all over the place. Also, this mo this board here was in a monitor that was assembled in December of 1990. This monitor is 34 years old. Er, the monitor this came out of is 34 years old this year. Happy birthday, monitor. All right. Unfortunately, I. All right. 
yes, this connect this front panel connector is actually soldered and not an actual connector. So I don't really want to. Oh, hi, Joe. Welcome. Yes, I. Uh, yes, Joe's just started selling Pico Gus's like very recently. So recently, I haven't been able to order one yet. I suspect Joe might be out of stock by the time I get to order them. Especially if the interwebs finds out that he's got them in stock. All right. I would, okay, I would kind of like to get some of these things out of the way. So as much as I don't really want to remove this front panel connector. Ooh, actually. Let's take a look at something first. What is that? That looks nasty. Hi, Eric. Welcome. Yeah, it's a fake connect. Yeah, no, it looks like a plug-in connector, but it's a fake plug-in connector. Yes, Joe. Joe. Joe has Pico Gus's. I think they're forty-five dollars. Same price as Ian's Tendy store. JCM-1.com slash store. If you buy them by Friday, I think they they ship. I'm not reading. I don't have Joe's website up to read the actual shipping statement. So yeah, order them tonight and they probably will ship this weekend. Hopefully Joe realizes that this weekend is going to be a Pico Gus shipping weekend. Alright, that looks like that was just dirt. So that's good, because I think that's actually a inductor. Yes, tomorrow is Friday. Oh, oh, uh, Joe says he doesn't have them in stock yet. Never mind, I'm like a... um, I... I'm um, working on uh, information uh, 15 minutes into the future. Where 15 minutes is some undefined amount. Okay, it looks like there is some dirt on the bottom of this board. I'm just kind of... Let me zoom out. I'm just check, uh, trying to clean a few spots that look suspicious just to make sure that it's actually just like something that's removable and not trace damage. Like I think this is old flux from the factory right here. Oh, old flux. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's flux. That's the flat where the flyback is. Yeah, I think that's old flux too. Okay, so it looks like it's just all old flux. All right. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to desolder this connector to get that out of the way. And then we'll start recapping. I would desolder the neck board, but there are a lot more wires involved with that. Garth just bought another LC2 for reasons. Oh, I bet Garth bid on the one that I, well, I was watching, but wasn't able to bid on, so... 
I may also be watching LCs for reasons. Maybe someday I'll manage to get an LC that actually works together. Like, actually completely, completely works. I uh, bet Garth's got an Apple IIe card. Maybe Garth will do some April Apples content. Which I don't have that up. Oh, I don't have that overlay in the scene. Oh, oh. We are waiting for the Moo gun to finish warming up so that it can moo. All right, we'll have the uh, chat engagement questions. So, Stepbomb says, if an LC doesn't smell like a fish fry, does it actually work? No, it probably doesn't actually work because even if it doesn't smell like a fish fry, it probably, you're, you're probably not smelling the right spot. The power supply probably smells like a fish fry, but it's contained by the metal cover. Jack says, I have one LC2 and one LC3. I think that's my LC limit. Garth says, doesn't want to recap another LC2. Jack says, I suppose my Quadra 605 is an LC if I take off the jumper. Actually, I thought the Quadra 605 was an LC 475. If you take off the jumper. Hi, Adam. Welcome. So if I remove J18 on my LC475, will the case gain those cool curved feet? Adam might recognize this board. And again, it's been a while since he sent it to me. <laughs> Huh. All right. It seems as if I have desoldered the wires on the fake connector. There we go. Got them out. Yes, it is an Apple Color composite monitor board. All right, and I guess let me go and remove the switch wires. And ah, luckily, because I kind of I gotta repair one of them anyways, since I kind of melted the solder a little, or not the the um, PVC jacket a little.
All right, so there's that. So I won't be fighting with that. Let's see, I got the, the main power leads out, so I'm not fighting with that backboard. I would remove this, but then I uh, will be fighting with, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's like at least ten wires that are going to this board in different parts of the board, so. Jesse says, give those cows some corn. All right. Let's, uh, I guess let's get busy recapping. Although, 12. Ah. Yeah. I think it is 12. All right, let me do this in a semi sort of logical way. And that is going to be that I'm going to pull up the cap kit wiki page on console five, see what the what it says about substitutions, if anything. All right, does not say anything about substitutions. That, uh, good night, Garth. Oh, wait, uh, it's only 6.33. Uh, good supper, Garth. <laughs> like, oh uh, yeah, Garth's on the West Coast. It's not, uh, not bedtime yet, it's just supper time. Yes, I had um, shepherd's pie with cornbread for supper, which was pretty good. Uh, yeah. Jack's like, logical, where's the fun in that? Well, the uh, fun in that is that I hopefully replace all the caps without going crazy. Although, in reality... I think I can tell the old and the new caps apart. And actually, as an added bonus, I'm sure I'm going to forget to mark one. There we go. Kip says, I'm already slightly crazy. We all are for keeping those old things alive. Joe is different though. <laughs> he really is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Moo Guns appreciate corn. Although I did see more fun making it 
uh, latest video on he got a hacko and it kind of made me want to hacko. Because he had one of these. Well, he didn't have the same brand I did, but it was a clone. Uh, I think they're all like all these ZD915s are clones of each other. I'm just going to, uh, J Jeremy's asking Lux, and I don't know if he's asking, am I, do I need to add Flux, or if the brown stuff on the board is Flux, um, I've, I think Flux is bad if you're using one of these vacuum desoldering stations, but I don't really want to add Flux unless I absolutely have to, because that'll just shorten the amount of time I have before I've got to actually stop and clean it. Ah, uh, says, I had the one you have, and then I upgraded the Hacko, then I got rid of my old one, and I missed the old one. It was just better. Yeah, it's kind of what I was afraid of. My, my only problem with these ZD 915s is they pretty much they seemingly pretty much make them so that you've got to just replace the entire handle. Oh, Jeremy says he would add flux. Well, I am going to respectfully disagree, Jeremy, because that causes problems with the desoldering vacuum pump. And actually, the problem with this capacitor was not that I needed to add flux. The problem was the pins were too large for my, the largest um, nozzle that I have for my new station. That's why I was having trouble desoldering it. I think the last bit right there on the board. I don't think that's corrosion. I think that's maybe is corrosion. I thought it was just the stubborn, some stubborn glue. Let me look at the other side of this board. No, oh, actually it's uh yeah, I should have probably used the extra iron. I dare say that cap might have been leaking. That might have been a leaky cap. Boy, would that be a... Confirmation of anything that... All right, now, I will put flux on the board to solder the new capacitors on, just to kind of cut through... Anything that might be on the board interfering with a good solder joint. Jeremy says it shouldn't be that bad with a single layer board. No, the, Jeremy, the problem with that capacitor was I picked the one that had... These large capacitors always have the really large pins. That's the problem. These pins were too large for my desolder station. The, the nozzle physically would not fit onto them. 
That's why I had trouble with that one. I'm almost sure of it. Now, if I start to remove some of these other ones and I have equal trouble, then I'll retract my statement. But yeah, the the nozzle would just physically would not fit. I am pretty sure though that Okay, it doesn't smell like fish, but it definitely has a odd smell to it. I dare say it probably is was starting to leak. Now, of course, as with any recapping job, my LCR meter likes to run away. There it is. Hmm. Yeah, it probably smells like the 80s. 661.8 microfarads, which actually is probably within spec. Although, I sure think it's started to leak. So, I'm going to call that a yes, that goes to show that leaking caps can test in spec. All right. I thought I would start with that one because it was the most obvious. And I'm just going to work my way around the board. These are decently well marked, but actually they are marked on the bottom of the board. So I think I'm just going to like, actually here's what I'm going to do. This will probably make it easier. Let me, let me do this real quick. So on the bottom of the board, I'm going to see if I can mark the cap. on the bottom and then I'll know what I got to remove and then I'll go around and do it. So, and yeah, I think Will was right. There is no rhyme or method to the numbering. All right. There's C201. C202. I've got the console five list up. C two oh four. I mean, it seems like some of them are in like the same area of the board, but then they jump around too. C two oh five. Oh wait, C two oh five is not one that it's not in the it's not an uh, um Oh uh, okay. Well that that plan uh that's gonna take too long. All right. New 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 plan. I'm going to move this recapping guide if I can see the tab. I need to rethink where I've got my webcam light because it interferes with my ability to see browser tabs. There we go.
All right. Later, Thomas. All right. Jeremy says, fun fact, Soviet capacitors were bare aluminum without a wrapper. Well, I can't say that that sounds very fun to work on. All right, so I'll, I will remove a few capacitors. And then I'll replace them and then we'll, I'll do a couple more because I got a list of what they should be. We got C101, C or C201, C202, C204. Okay, that's probably three at a time. That's probably good. Um, Jesse says in Soviet Russia, Cap solders you. Jeremy says, I only know that because I've been watching the Clueless Engineer. Jack says, I measured the mac the caps I took out of my laser writer power supply and my meter claims that the ESR of five of them was 150 ohms. Uh, Jack, I think at that point the resistors, not capacitors. Uh, capacitance was way out of whack too. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Um, how to know if your capacitor is bad. Step one, if it has a very, very high ESR, it's probably bad. All right, 100 microfarad, 16 volt. I bet the I bet console five substituted that for a Okay, so it does look like the C201 is a hundred microfarad 16 volt cap, and it looks like for all of the hundred microfarad 10 and 16 volt caps, they have been substituted in the kit with 25 volt, which is totally fine. That will not cause any issues. You can go up to a larger voltage rating on capacitors. Generally, one, one to two steps is generally safe to do. Now, you don't want to go like, like too far up the voltage ratings. Especially if it's a circuit that, say, needs a, a low ESR cap, because the ESR of a high voltage cap is going to be higher. But you can generally go 
like one or two voltage steps, then you're generally okay. If it's a circuit that's not needing a low ESR cap, you might even be able to go a little further. Um, and in fact, in some cases, electronic companies will sometimes even, the schematic may give one voltage value and they may even substitute up themselves depending on inventory levels of and what they can get. So. Ooh, you know, I just got a, um, Jeremy was asking, how high does the fishometer go? And, wow, that, that just smelled like fish. All right. 202 was a 47, 16. All right, something tells me that's probably going to be a, it looks like there's two of them. All right. All right. Hold, please, while I find the forty-seven. Microfarad caps. That's 4.7. Let me go ahead and sort these caps. All right, that's a 220 and a 0.22. Point three three twenty two hundred two twenty twenty two hundred hundred microfarad thirty three. You can tell you're working on an analog board of a monitor when you go through all the caps and see lots of high voltage caps. All right, there is a forty seven. Yeah, I think I should have Okay, so it looks like they substituted a 35 volt.
All right, there we go. That actually kind of smelled fishy too. 6.3 volts, 1,000 microfarad. All right. So I think I should only have one. Thousand microfarads. One. Ah, must be this one here. It's a uh, ten volt. I only see one thousand microfarad cap on the list. So it must be, must be that one there. All right. Woohoo, it's almost 10 o'clock and I have replaced all of four capacitors. All right, next one is uh, 210 and 212. See if I can get those real quick. All right, where's C210? Right there. It's 210. Let's see if 212 happens to be like somewhere very close. There it is. C210. There we go. So C210 and C212, let's see, 210 is a 10 microfarad. Yeah, it looks like there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten microfarads. It looks like they substituted fifty volt parts. I'll uh, I'm gonna test these ones I've removed once I get through the 200 series of caps. So there is C, C210.
and then let's see, C to 12 is a 22 microfarad. And it looks like they might have also said this with a 50 volt part. Yes, all right. All right. Don't forget to smash that like button for the dedication to keeping these old devices working as long as possible. Forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future April Apples content. All right, and now, now that we've got a few caps out, let's let's see what the fishometer says. Better not tell me to go to McDonald's for a filet of fish sandwich because I do not want one right now. Oh, hold on. The, the leads were shorted together. Nine hundred two microfarad. All right. Well, that one was in spec. Although I think if that's the one I think it was, it smelled fishy when I soldered its replacement. This one. All right, well, that one appears to be in spec and I. Mm, that one's kind of a bit high on ESR. Then again, these smaller value caps can be a bit higher on ESR, so. Mm, that's kind of a bit high on ESR. It's within spec, though. Mm, that one's a bit high on ESR as well. All right. Okay, so I guess moving along. All right, we got through the 200 series of caps. It looks like the next one is, we should, there should be a 303, 304, 305, that would be capped around the same part of the board as I was just working, but I believe the cap numbers are all over the place. So it wouldn't surprise me if those are actually capped somewhere else on the board.
YouTube was just jealous of my Moo gun. All right, hopefully you can hear something now. What you missed was me seeing that Joe said silence and I made fun of a copyrighted song. It won't be winning any Academy Awards. Ah, there we go. C305. <laughs> Dex says the moo triggered auto mute. Now I want to get a a um XLR mic. I have the technology. I just need the microphone and an XLR cable. Uh, let's see. Let's see, 305, and that does match the description. I basically uh, probably will order them Monday. They are in my Amazon cart. There's C308. I guess I'll go ahead and remove it since you'll see it. We gotta find C306. Okay, yep, that's definitely C three oh eight. Let me see if I see C three oh six. Oh, well let me go ahead and remove C O three oh nine. All right, C three oh six is around here somewhere. Oh, you know, maybe that was one that was uh, on the outer side of the board. Board over, then I'll probably see it. Oh, I think it's that one, right? Yep, C three oh six. All right, good night, Frank. All right, excellent. That one also matches the description. Also, I don't think any of those were leaking. I didn't get the hint of leaking capacitor. So, all right, C303 is a one microfarad, 50 volt. And because that is such a common value, That one is not substituted. So C three O three. Yeah, let me go. I'll go ahead and put C three oh four in. That is a four point seven twenty five volt.
and I believe that because there's also a 4.750 volt, it looks like they did substitute 50 volts for all three 4.7s, which should be fine. That's only like two voltage steps up anyways. Generally fine. So that's C304. Oh, hey, Dave. Welcome. Just uh, recapping this analog board here. I've already smelled the distinct smell of fish a couple times, so... moment on these I'm just kind of smelling uh, not fish it's just kind of hmm Well, Dave, uh, this this board has not made me want to go out and eat a filet of fish sandwich. Three hundred three through this so C three hundred five is a point twenty two volt. Yeah, there are some tricky values on this analog board. Point twenty two microfarad, fifty volt. Now that's definitely that one. So this one is C three hundred five. One. This could be tricky to finish recapping tonight. We'll see. I also might be able to stream a little longer than usual Thursdays, so. Hmm. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Adam sending me a part and smoke just came out of it. Or smoke came out of part of it. Well, I guess I got my work cut out for me. Uh, no, Dave, I'm not staying up eight hours tonight. That would completely wreck my plans for tomorrow. <sighs> C306 is 100 microfarads. All right. Hundred microfarads. Hundred microfarad ten volts. Oh, here we go. That's gonna be one of these. Three oh 
six. <laughs> Adam says the stuff he's sending me is tested, non working. Excellent. Well, Adam did tell me there would be some, uh, some assemble it yourself. So it seems like. Seems like that part of it is most certainly true. See, that pad is a little weak. Hmm. Let's see. Can't maybe Ah Adam says some of it works but it's ugly. Okay, well All right. Because this pad kind of lifted. Going to reinforce the I'm going to reinforce it here beside the leg of the component that it's attached to on the other side. There we go. All right. So that pad started coming off up off the board, so I soldered it to the resistor that the capacitor's attached to beside. And let me just now make sure I didn't create a solder blob to the thing it's not attached to over here. All right. Much appreciated, Adam. Let me make sure we still have continuity here. Yes. Should be good. All right. Let's see here, 308 and 309 are 10 microfarad, 16 volts.
B. Then get those three of eight. That one and oh, the other one fell out of the book. Right. Let's All right. Okay. So I think that got that set of casters. Oh, no. I'm going to go ahead and put them in my discard pile because I didn't really have any obvious signs that those had been leaking like no fish smells or anything so it's not going to bother testing them so c17 c20 all right over on this side because they're easier to see on this side. All right. C17. 
is a really logical order. Alright, so there's 320. Here we go. 317. 317 is logically all the way up, getting close to the middle of the board. After having a bunch that were in the lower corner. Okay, here's 317 out. And C320 is back over. Where is it? Yeah, it makes twenty is right there. All the electrolytics around C three twenty are like in the five hundreds. It would seem as if whoever designed this board and numbered the capacitors kind of seemingly numbered them based on when they put them on the board or on the schematic. All right, so C17 was this 16 volt 100 microfarad. And then C320 was this. 4.725. All right. So C17 or C317 is going to be one of these. This cap was large enough, I'll probably test it. Adam says, sold an Apple II Plus and a pair of disc two drives and separate auctions to a guy named Cyberbob. Well, I hope the Praetorian doesn't go find Cyberbob. Eric finally had to swap out the analog board on his SE30. Finally getting the thing together. Nice. Printing out a blue SCSI adapter. Yeah, 
Yep, still recapping. There's a lot of caps on this board. 4.725. All right, let's get the I don't know if it has so many caps because it's a color monitor, so it has like three times the electron beams, or if it has all these caps because Waz didn't design it, so it wasn't like part optimized. Now that one smelled a bit fishy, so we will put both of these through the test. All right, so this one is going to be the one that was at three C three twenty. I smelled a little bit of a little hint of fish when I soldered this. Starting to get the up there on ESR. Although low capacitance capacitors can be higher in ESR and still be totally fine. Yeah, that other one that was probably fine. All right. So let's see here. Next capster move are going to be 321 and 322. All right, so I see 322. 321 is playing catch me if you can apparently it's 321 321 is a oh one microfarad 15 50 volt well it may not even be populated Now it's probably probably 
seven. Okay, I'm probably just going to skip it and I'll come back to it should I find it. Yep. All right, three twenty two. Three. Oh, that's embarrassing. I was trying to desolder the wrong two points. All right. So 322 is a 100 microfarad 10 volt. All right, we'll see when you get back at them. All right, 341 and 343. All right, I think I know where those are. Those are... Those are... Now we're back in this lower corner again.
go. All right. So C three forty one was a hundred microfarad ten volt. All right. C three forty three uh is a ten microfarad sixteen volt. Could be one of those ones. We are just, we have passed the halfway mark, and I wish I could say I was halfway done with this recap job. Oh, that was embarrassing. Yeah, that's embarrassing. I did it again. I now twice had the caster fall out. Could bend the leads over, but that just makes it harder to remove. I realize I like made a mistake. Later.
All right. All right, so C41 and C43. <sighs> Seems like that's only about a third of the way done. This is taking forever. C505, C506, C507, C510. All right. Five, 505, and 510 are beside each other. There's 506 and 57. All right. All right, excellent. Those are like. So here's five oh six. Five oh seven. And five five. All right, there's four more caps out. Five oh five is a Point thirty three microfarad at fifteen volt fifty volt. Five oh six is a hundred microfarad. All right. Five oh seven is a ten micro. Oh, five oh seven and five ten are both tens. All right. All right. 
for seven of cups. Caps in. All right, good night, Eric. Probably better to sleep tonight than sleep reading a 1,000 page request for <laughs> for a uh, bitter response. Ugh. You know, I'm glad eBay selling on eBay doesn't require a thousand page purchase or bitter proposals. For now, I'm sure eBay would probably add that if they thought it would uh, make bidders more likely to like pay the seller. Ah, request for a proposal. Thank you. As as you can probably tell, I'm not used to those uh, public government bid type documents. All right. Another four down. Let's see here. Get five fifty two. Five fifty two, six oh two, and six oh six. I think if I get those three, okay, there's 552, it's at the edge of the board.
you know, how about let me do 552 and 764 because then I will be done with this like lower quadrant of the board. There we go. Kind of trying to follow them numerically, but you know, there's also something to be said about just going ahead and getting this one last capacitor in the lower part of the board. So, 552. Is a one microfarad and seven sixty four is a one microfarad. What do you know? I kind of, kind of had that sneaking suspicion they were actually going to be. They look very similar. There we go. What did it do with the All right, there we go. All right, there we go. So this lower part of the board down here has now been recapped. All right. So now that I got 552, I was looking for 602 and 606. All right, 606 is a one microfarad. Six oh two, I think, is gonna be a larger capacitor. Okay, well, I found 606. Six oh two
Oh, there it is. Six o two was the two twenty microfarad sixteen volt. Okay, so it was not that one because there's also a two twenty microfarad fifty volt. So go there is a 220 16 volt in the kit so that one wasn't substituted so two And then the uh, six was Okay, there we go, 602 and 606, 613 and 614 and 618 and 620, all right. Uh, at this point, I'm just tempted to uh... all right. I'm gonna change that.
mainly because at, at this point I've just got like a whole bunch of the same value capacitors and then a whole bunch of different ones and I'm just gonna get 622 here. All right, so 622 is a 2200 microfarad 6.3 volt. C seven seventy one. Point twenty two microfarad fifty volt. Well, Adam, you've missed lots of Moogun action. I am still recapping. I think of I think I can tell that Steve Wozniak was not involved in the design of this monitor because he would have found a probably a way to reduce component count by a third. Maybe not necessarily in all good ways, but all right. Let's see. 126. C926 is 4.7 microfarad, 50 volts. Should be, should be the last one of those.
here and here. C907 and C908. There. Nine oh seven. Nine oh eight. All right, so nine oh seven. Thirty three microfarad, yep. And hundred microfarad, and they're both hundred and sixty volt caps. I'm gonna actually test those after I replace them. So that's going to be All right, so is there any double checking here? So there should be a 680 microfarad, 200 volt. I just want to double check that because there's like a couple of these that are high voltage caps. Hmm, that could be a problem. Oh, I already replaced that one. Okay. Three two fifty. Okay. All right. Just making sure that I knew which was which, because there's there's like a couple of okay. Let me see. C nine oh eight is the hundred microfarad. Nine oh seven is the not sure exactly what these two caps do, but the originals were rated at one hundred and sixty volts, so they're something to do with the Havels. But I just don't know what. It may be the 
maybe the power supplies over on this side of the board, even though incoming power is elsewhere. And yes, I will reflow the the um, flyback, but I'll do that after I finish recap. Here's those two caps. Uh, next two that have X's on them are here. Looks like that is C614 and C614. Great. There. Oh, actually, that's C616. And C614. Wait a minute, that's weird. Oh. It was C20. 614 and C620. C614 is 2200 microfarad, 16 volt. Right. 
is it 14? C620 is 100 microfarad, 50 volt. All right. Oh, 100 microfarad, 50 volt. That is this one here. I also like how it says caution, high voltage, caution, right there on the underside of the board where well, you're not going to see it if you don't remove it from the plate. So this is another reason why trained, trained professionals only. There we go, there's two more down. All right, there's one right there. Could I have it removed? That one is. C763, I believe. C763, confirmed. All right, that matches the description. It's a, it was 100 microfarad, 16 volt. I need to get some of these 25 volts.
All right, I think I've got all the capacitors on like this side of the that half of the board. Looking for ones that on this half of the board that I missed because I marked all the old ones with a red mark. At least all the old ones that I saw. I think I got all the ones with the red mark there. So now we are yep, this other half of the board. There's any maybe missed. Nope. Okay, it looks like I'm in this small. Actually, it looks like the ones that I need to replace now are kind of all in this area here, but kind of in here. So let me get the. Let me start with the two closest to the flyback and work my way the other direction. Because it'll make them easy to find. I think that's C742 and C741. Okay, so
All right, well, I tried to fix the audio. If it was broken. If it wasn't broken, then... All right, well, I got Bum can hear me again, so... All is well. I don't... Hopefully I didn't say too much before he noticed audio was gone. All right. E740. Seven forty six. All right. E746 is the 47016. All right. All right. Do I really only have one, two, three, four, five, six more capacitors to go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, actually. I've got seven cap new capacitors left from the kit, and I see six on the board, but there was one that I never found, and now that I look at the board, I, I don't think, actually, I think the last one of these I recapped, I remember there was a capacitor that just was not present on the board, so, yeah. I think I got just these like six more to go here. It's going to be seven oh five, seven oh nine. Let me go and remove those two because I see their numbers. There's seven oh five for the one microfarad. All right. Seven twenty. Is a ten microfarad, okay. Another one. Mm. 
other the ten microfarads. All right. So that's one, two, three, four. Seven ten. Forty seven. All right, so let's see the forty seven. There's let me go and get seven ten. Okay, I think that's 770. Yeah, that's 770. It's just not a very good 7 on this board. All right. That's the 47. Seven twenty and seven oh nine are tens. Seven oh five is a one. All right, so let's let me go and get the actually, let me go ahead and solder this one here. And then I'll get the two tens because that's the last two of the tens. And then I'll get the one. And then there's two more caps on the board. There's always a mystery cap with these kits, yeah. Unless you're recapping a Dynacomp 2GS power supply, then they're all mystery caps. If you know, you know. All right, good night, Adam. Yes, I. looking at the time, I'm probably not going to finish tonight, unfortunately. But we'll see. Maybe I might get a burst of energy. All right, so... 709 and 720 were the... microfarads
go. Okay, and then there is a one seven oh five one microfarad. All right. Yeah, Jack, the um, the Dynacomp power supplies have no uh, component legends. There are no component designators on the board. like that would have cost apple extra and apple probably said nah no one's ever going to be repairing these anyways leave the legends off the silk don't put a silk screen on it all right and the last two caps are c613 and c618 C six thirteen's a one hundred. All right, and then C six eighteen. is a one. All right. Okay, so C613 is this 100. Jack says, I guess the, the service guide said replace power supply. Yeah, it probably did. Assuming it didn't say something like, ask customer if they enjoy using GSOS. If so, then ask customer if they'd be interested in trying out Mac OS. Have customer trade in Apple II GS for Macintosh. It's the wave of the future. Actually, no, I'm not aware of any such Apple II GS to Macintosh upgrade program. <laughs> I'm 
of course, joking on that point. Jack says, GSOS was lovable the way a scrappy puppy is lovable. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's that's the caps. All right, I did say I was going to reflow the large solder joints, but it is like midnight and I am getting tired. So I think what I'm going to do, as much as I don't really want to, I thought maybe I'd go a little later tonight, but I actually am not going to try to push it. I will though, however, I have a number of these larger size capacitors that got removed, and I will test them just to see if any of them were bad. I don't remember where they all went. All right, so this is a 100 microfarad, and that one looks like that one was fine. So, anyways, I'll have to do a follow on stream and where we'll actually try to put the monitor the rest of the way together. Actually that capacitor. Huh. That one seems to be in really good shape. Although that is like a brand I've never heard of before. Tascon or Tycon. Thirty two microfarad, one ohm. Yeah, that one's out of spec. That's a high voltage cap too. Now that that probably was getting close to needing replaced. Uh that one's thirty three microfarad. Another Tycon cap. Hmm, that one's yeah, that one's in spec. It's four seventy. If we go plus or minus twenty percent, then yeah, that one's in spec. Yep, I think that's a eighty. That's a hundred microfarad, so it's eighty six. Yeah, that's still in spec. Kind of a little low, though. Two twelve. I think it's a two twenty. Another Tycon. Yeah, it's a two twenty. So that one was in spec. Yep, and that's a hundred microfarad. Okay. So it does look like. Okay, so it does look like there were a few caps on this board that were leaky because I did smell some fish, but it does appear as if a lot of them were, well, I mean, they were old, but anyways, I, I usually do recap everything or nothing, so not not going to kick myself for recapping. Oh, come on, webcam. Ah, my webcam forgot the manual focus that I set it to. Fine, be that way. Getting tired of it not auto-focusing, so I set it to manual focus. But, there we go. I set it to auto-focus again. Maybe it'll decide to act better today. Anyways, alright, so, 
got the board recap. I do need to reflow the large solder joints just in case. I mean, none of them look cracked, but I'm just going to reflow them while I got the board out. And then probably good to try it, but I'm not going to do that tonight because I am getting tired. While you're tired, it's not a good time to be working on a monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and call this stream to a close. So probably for sure next week, unless I unless I decide to do some something different. And, and it might be Thursday's live stream next week. But anyways, we'll continue working on the this monitor one day next week. It might be Thursday's live stream. It might be Tuesday's live stream. Depends on what I'm feeling like when I schedule live streams for next week. We'll continue the composite monitor. So we'll try this board. And if it, hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, well, I do have a few other aces up my, well, they're short sleeves. So they're actually just setting over with the monitor. I.e. I did locate some of the ICs that are on this board. Just in case. It's always possible I might try to repair the first board. I think it's chipped, so I may try to replace the chips and just see what happens. Anyways, that's where I'm going to stop for tonight because I'm getting tired and swapping things into a CRT when you need to be careful around the neck. It's not a good thing to do it while you're tired. So I think that's a good time to stop. Hey, no problem, Sad Mac. I'm always glad to stream. I'm glad I'm back on my groove and I'm, I was also glad today that even though there was a disgusting amount of pollen in the air today, my sinuses were okay, probably because I've gotten used to the sheer amount of pollen in the air, which it was disgusting. And then it rained this evening, and then I also noticed I have pools of pollen in my driveway. Ugh. Yeah, I live around a lot of pine trees. They can put out a lot of pollen. There are days where at first I think it's foggy, and then I realize it's Colony. Yeah. I stay inside while the trees are blowing that much pollen. Anyways, yeah. Glad I could stream. Glad I'm getting back on my groove. And we'll have some more April apples fun. Oh, wait. Here we go. Yeah, we'll have some more April apples fun. I don't have a fancy animation on mine, so I can, I can uh, double click and I can animate it. So, yeah. There we go. April apples fun. Check out other April Apples content. And let's see, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications. I do have a merch store. I hope it works. I guess I will find out at some point. Yeah, the thing is, if anyone's wondering, I didn't set up analytics on my merch store because I don't want to set up analytics on it. I also turned off the annoying. I think I completely turned off. Knock on wood. Let me know if it's wrong. If you like start to check out and then stop. I think I turned off the emails that it annoys you with when you abandon a cart. Because I don't like those either. I think they're creepy. So anyways, the thing is, yeah, I've not received an order yet. So if it's completely broken because there's a setting I haven't found to set, I don't know yet. And I also don't know how many people are visiting the store because I didn't turn on analytics. So at least if if you appreciate the fact that I didn't set up some of those annoying things other web stores did, give me a thumbs up. Even if you can't order anything tonight, you can at least give me a thumbs up on this video. <laughs> but yes, I um I have April Apples merch up and I'm going to try to get some other merch up too soon. Uh, maybe the line of regret wear. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, I think that's where I'm going to draw the stream to an end. Hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Hope to see you here next time. Take care and God bless. Computer Ask Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon. And buy your tips and memberships on coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just one dollar.
don't forget to smash that like button. And if you've liked what you've seen, subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or live stream. And as always, thank you for all your support. I hope to see you next time. And until then, take care.